The stochastics is another really popular technical indicator that was developed in the 1950s and used by many retail traders. In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain how the stochastics indicator actually works. Stochastics is made up of two lines, basically the K line and the D line. There's a lot of debate on what the correct or default settings are for the stochastics indicator. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use 14 and 3, which is one of the most popular settings. So we begin with the K line. And this here is the formula for the K line. CP refers to the most recent closing price of the underlying stock. H14 is the highest that the price reached in the last 14 days or the preceding 14 candles. And L14 is the lowest that the price reached in the preceding 14 days, the last 14 candles. Lastly, multiplying this by 100 basically converts it into a percentage. A percentage of what? Well, the stochastics is an oscillator. And this means that it's like a pendulum that's swinging between two extreme points. So when the pendulum is at one particular extreme, it is expected to lose momentum and start to swing back in the opposite direction. In our example, a 14 period stochastic indicator, it basically has defined the extremes as the highest that the price reached in the past 14 days and the lowest that the price reached in the past 14 days. The K line reading tells us where the most recent closing price is in relation to the two extremes that we have identified. So if the K line is at 50, that means that the most recent closing price is in the middle of the highest and lowest prices for the last 14 days. If the K line is at 95, that means the most recent closing price is very, very close to the highest price over the last 14 days. If the K line is at 10, for example, that means that the most recent closing price is very close to the lowest price over the past 14 days. The second line in the stochastics indicator is the D line. And in our example, the D line is the three period moving average of the K line. When we're looking for trading signals, we'll be looking to the D line to provide those signals. So how do we use this indicator? The stochastics indicator is considered overbought when the D line is above 80. And what this means is that the average K line reading over the past three periods is above 80. And this is supposedly a signal to sell. The stochastics indicator is oversold when the D line is below 20. This means that the average of the past three readings on the K line is below 20. And this is a signal to buy. Well, just like the RSI, it seems like a really easy way to make money. You just, you know, see where this line is and whether it's telling us to buy or sell. But I think the problems with the stochastics indicator, they are pretty obvious. First of all, the underlying assumption behind the stochastics indicator is that when prices are within 20% of their recent highest or lowest points, then it is time for the price to reverse and move in the opposite direction. Says who? Oscillators can remain in extreme regions for a very long period of time. We can see here a very strong uptrend movement where prices are just going higher and higher and higher every day and forming new extremes every single day. The pendulum can stay in the extreme region for an extended period of time because every day as the price increases, the extreme end of the oscillator is moving higher and higher. There are no rules that state that prices must turn and move in the opposite direction when they are within 20% of a range high or range low. But even if that wasn't the case, the indicator is suggesting that we enter trades that are counter to the existing trend. Basically, it's telling you to sell when prices are increasing and to buy when prices are falling. But maybe following this indicator, it gives us some kind of sense that we are buying low and selling high. Sure, but our decisions to buy or sell should not be dependent on what one single technical indicator thinks is overbought or oversold. 
we should be also looking at you know fundamental business factors, overall economic factors, and the market as a whole as well. Also, as I often point out, the parameters that are chosen for technical indicators, they tend to be very random and meaningless. What exactly is 14 periods? While doing research for this video, I found a lot of different arguments and disagreements about what different people thought should be the correct settings for the stochastics indicator. It seems like maybe for different people, the various different kinds of parameters, maybe they work for certain kind of asset classes or during certain periods of the year. Or maybe it's all just psychological. Well, I wouldn't know because I don't use the stochastics indicator either. That's all for today's video. Like, comment, subscribe if you found it to be a helpful explanation of stochastics. I'll see you in the next video.